Now we talk about a moving average process. So this is a MA1, that is moving average 1, there is a lag of 1. So you have y of t is kappa, kappa is some constant. Then you have this epsilon t and you have theta epsilon t minus 1. So both this epsilon t and epsilon t minus 1, they come from the same normal distribution. Mean is 0 and then some variance is there, sigma square. So if you take expectation of this, you will get kappa. Gamma 0 is just the variance. It comes out to 1 plus theta square sigma square and gamma 1 is the covariance with lag 1. Now gamma 2 and gamma 3 and gamma 4, all of them are 0. So you can calculate this covariance. I have explained how to calculate these expectations in my lectures on probability. So one important thing to notice here is that you have just this theta sigma square. So notice that in uh, our previous lecture we had seen that if you instead had a process like this yt was phi of yt minus 1 plus some error term and when you found out the covariance it had a term like phi to the power of i and the problem was that if this value of phi was greater than 1 this absolute value then as i goes to infinity that you add more and more terms this phi to the power of i also went to infinity which basically uh, made the process not covariance stationary and that is precisely why we wanted that this phi should be less than 1 so as i goes to infinity this phi of i should go to 0 now there is no raised to the power i here so we are uh, in safe hands we don't have to worry about it so this theta can take any value we don't put any bound on it that it should be greater than 1 or less than 1 in ma1 process now you can extend this MA1 to MAN, that N means N lags. So you first copy these three terms as it is. So I'm copying these three right here. And then you have T minus 2, T minus 3, theta 3, T minus 3, theta 4, T minus 4, all the way to theta N, T minus N. So let us do an example of simulating a MA2 process. So this y of t is epsilon t plus 0 0.88 et minus 1 minus 0.48 epsilon t minus 2. So again uh, w is this ARIMA simulation, ARIMA simulation where AR is autoregressive, MA is moving average. So now we are doing moving average. So here you see there is a moving average here. Earlier we had AR here. These are the two coefficients 0.88 at minus 0.48 and you can add as many coefficients as you want to and then you are drawing from a normal random variable here so you are drawing from n01 since you have r norm 100 is the number of trials so i have not written uh, mean and variance here so that is it. it this will give you 100 values because n is 100 so all these 100 values you can plot uh, you can find the autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function. Now in this case, the partial autocorrelation function is not useful. So we saw in AR form that partial autocorrelation function was very important. Here it is not. Here this autocorrelation function will give you the values because we are dealing with these uh, normal random variables. We are adding white noise to it. We are not adding past processes. So if you keep on taking past processes out, it is not going to impact on anything. So what we expect is we expect n significant autocorrelations for MAN. So here we have MA2. So we want two significant autocorrelations. That is if you see the autocorrelation graph, you should find two values which are significant. And we have alternating patterns for partial autocorrelations. So now let us run this in R and see how it looks like. So we copy paste the code here and uh, we just plot the time series autocorrelation function and partial autocorrelation function and but we draw it in a nice layout so that's why we have a layout matrix and we are uh, trying to do these paragraphs in a layout form that's why we have par here anyway let us select this all and hit the run button uh, so we have run these commands we should get a graph right here so you see uh, these 500 things. So first look at partial autocorrelation. So there are a large number of values just significant. It's significant here, significant here, here, here. This is below the blue line, so not significant. This is below the blue line, below the blue line. So you can't say anything from partial autocorrelation. In 
autocorrelation you can say a lot of things so first value is always one because yt is being compared with yt so you always ignore the first value obviously it's always going to be one in autocorrelation it is these other two values which are important so this denotes that it is uh, related to t minus 1 and t minus 2 and that is what our process was it was with t minus 1 was 0.88 and minus 0.48 was t minus 2 so again autocorrelation these two values show t minus 1 t minus 2 so this is t in autocorrelation whereas in partial autocorrelation you start with t minus 1 t minus 2 t minus 3 t minus 4 there is no t in partial autocorrelation but in autocorrelation you start with t so uh, for moving average the punchline is you look at autocorrelation for uh, autoregressive ar process you look at uh, partial correlation